ऑपरेशनल एम्पलीफायर्स और ऑप एम्प्स इन शॉर्ट और डायरेक्ट कपल्ड हाई गेन वोल्टेज एम्पलीफायर्स नॉट ओनली दे आर हाईली वेस्टाइल दे आर ऑल्सो वाइट इन एक्सपेंसिव दे फाइंड applications in a wide variety of areas ranging from the design of a small discrete amplifier circuit to the instrumentation that is used for process control in an industry it is an uh, analog amplifier before the advent of uh, digital revolution op amp was uh, ruling the electronic uh, circuit uh, design scene of course now at present everything is being uh, done in uh, digital domain the importance of uh, operational amplifier and uh, analog amplifier naturally it cannot command as much importance now as uh, it was uh, doing before digital revolution at present it is limited to analog domain analog world as already mentioned it is a highly versatile circuit one can use it to design circuits that can perform addition subtraction differentiation integration and uh, many more such uh, operations for this reason its name carries operations operational operational signifies that it is capable of doing several mathematical operations inside it consists of three units first one is differential amplifier second one is gain providing unit the purpose of this unit is to provide high gain last part or last unit is a source or sink unit these three units together provides a higher level functionality than provided by any other device it gives very high voltage gain it gives huge amount of bandwidth its input impedance is very high so there is no loading problem by this amplifier on the source its uh, output impedance is low so all uh, the desired properties are uh, available from this amplifier amplifiers uh, operational amplifiers part 1 series on semiconductor devices and circuits lecture number 8.16 op amp stands for operational amplifier operational amplifiers or uh, amplifiers which are able to provide the implementation of mathematical operations like addition subtraction integration differentiation in addition to amplification these are analog uh, amplifiers widely used considered to be versatile 
as the, se the session is uh, long, big, it is organized in uh, two parts. This is first part. In this part, the focus is on the origins and uh, development of uh, operational amplifiers, their uh, characteristics, their uh, modes of operation, their uh, symbols and uh, terminal designations, and also their uh, modes of operation. Some more aspects also, important and interesting aspects also, we consider here, right now. Let us start the session by considering some general points pertaining to op amps. What is op amp? It is a direct coupled high gain amplifier to which feedback is added to control its overall response characteristic. So basically, it's a DC amplifier like uh, a Darlington pair or uh, a Cascode uh, pair, but it is associated with very high gain. It is used to perform a wide variety of linear functions and also some nonlinear operations. This is all general information. It is a versatile, predictable, and economic system building block. It is versatile. Its behavior is predictable and it is also not expensive. Hence, it is an economic system building block. Using this, a system can be built. Its main advantages are smaller size, high reliability, reduced cost, temperature tracking, and low offset voltage and currents. These are all plus points pertaining to op amps. A few points regarding invention. Carl D. Swartzel Jr. of Bell Labs filed a patent in 1941 as summing amplifier. This is the starting point of the development of... Uh, in '47, the op amp was uh, first formally defined and named in a paper by John R. Ragajini of Columbia University. So it all started uh, some 60 or 65 years back. This much span of history is there behind the development of op amps. Many consider the first vacuum tube practical op amp was invented in 52 by George Philbrick. Notice it is an analog amplifier and before the arrival of uh, digital revolution, digital circuits, it uh, used to be one of the most important uh, amplifiers or blocks for uh, designing a system that can serve. After uh, the arrival of uh, digital revolution, this particular circuit or device has gone a little bit into background. Now everything is digital. Some more points regarding invention. Texas Instruments invented the IC in 58, which paved the way for Bob Widler at Fairchild inventing the solid state monolithic op amp in 63. So I see op amp, it uh, come into being in 1963. It took another half decade for op amps to become relatively inexpensive and uh, 1968 onwards they are being used widely. They find their way into much consumer audio devices uh, in the late 70s and early 80s. As already mentioned, before the advent of a digital revolution, op-amp is the star 
it is the main stay of a circuit design analog circuit design applications here are mentioned some important applications this is not complete list one can find several other areas several other applications for these amplifiers one application is uh, in building audio amplifiers audio means signal which can be heard by human ear usually audio range is considered up to 20 kilohertz audio amplifiers require to give clarity up amps they are used in the design of audio amplifiers you are going to see up amps have a quality of noise cancellation noise reduction which is useful or which is required when processing audio signals hence the use of op amps in the design of audio amplifiers they are also used in the design of regulators low dropout regulators what are regulators here regulator means voltage regulator the purpose of voltage regulator is to maintain the voltage at uh, the designated level irrespective of the amount of load connected or irrespective of uh, amount of the current drawn from the source op amps are used in the design in active filters filters are frequency selective networks in the design of uh, filters active filters these are used in the design of medical sensor interfaces also it is being used in baseband receivers in uh, analog to digital converters in uh, the design of oscillators, in uh, signal generators, in the design of hearing aids. These are all applications where one can find one or more, one or more uh, operational amplifiers functioning, working. As already mentioned, these are only some of the uses or applications many more applications are there for op amps in the analog domain now a few points regarding uh, symbol and designations terminal designations of uh, op amp here is shown the symbol it is a magnified arrow there are two terminals on the input side Against one terminal, minus sign is there. Against another terminal, plus sign is there. The terminal with the minus sign, it is called inverting terminal. Terminal with the plus sign is called non-inverting terminal. The input to the amplifier VI is V2 minus V1. Here V2 is input to inverting terminal V1 is input to non-inverting terminal outside one can find a single terminal it is output uh, terminal output voltage appears here it is uh, equal to a v b a notice a v is less than zero it means it is negative a v is negative quantity it is non-zero finite and high quantity rl is load after having some information regarding the symbol and designations from this slide now let us move further basic modules of op amp op amp is actually a system 
inside there exists some certain number of systems actually entire op amp can be divided into three subsystems first one is called input stage last one is called output stage the one that is in between input and output stage is called intermediate stage input stage is uh, a differential amplifier always it is a differential amplifier which acts as input stage intermediate stage is a stage that provides gain output stage or third stage is it acts as a source or sink stage some information is given here the first stage or input stage is always a differential amplifier the second stage or intermediate one is a gain stage amplification the third stage or output stage is a source or sink stage some more points regarding internal structure of op amp the first stage or input stage is differential amplifier it is already mentioned which is capable of double to single ended conversion we all know differential amplifiers they are capable of taking two inputs and they give a single output so double to single ended conversion takes place in differential amplifier it accepts two input signals and output is single ended carrying both the differential as well as common mode signals this stage is expected to have huge cmrr common mode rejection ratio as no other following stages can improve upon this property second stage called gain stage is designated designed to provide huge amount of gain the third stage called output stage is used either to source or sink huge amount of load current in the structure of op amp notice that uh, it is the differential amplifier first stage which plays an important role its importance in the design of op amp is so much that uh, one can view op amp as uh, a modified uh, differential amplifier here is shown equivalent circuit of op amp this is input side this is output side output side there is a source its voltage is ab bi r not is output resistance of the amplifier v not is output voltage rl is load input side two is uh, inverting terminal one is non inverting terminal r is input resistance this is a low frequency equivalent circuit in the circuit you don't find any reactive elements then frequency rises reactive elements they start uh, coming into being influencing uh, the performance of the amplifier so when we consider high frequency equivalent circuit reactive elements also require to be taken into account if we want a reasonably good results from the analysis characteristics ideal operational amplifier is supposed to exhibit the following characteristics notice ideal ideal operational amplifier is supposed to exhibit input resistance that tends to be infinity it is supposed to exhibit output resistance that tends to be zero notice infinite resistance or zero resistance they are not at all achievable in reality in reality the possible the possible thing is one can have an operational amplifier with a high input resistance low output resistance that is reality that is uh, practicability but here we are considering ideal operational amplifier ideal one can have infinity input resistance 
zero output resistance. Voltage gain should be infinity. Of course, minus sign indicates that uh, output uh, is uh, out of phase with input. Bandwidth should tend to infinity. Output should uh, be zero when inverting and non-inverting uh, terminals are given same input independent of magnitude of v1 characteristics do not drift should not drift with temperature these are the characteristics as already mentioned infinity zero these are not achievable voltage gain infinity is not achievable but you can have with good design high voltage gain bandwidth infinity is not realizable what we can have in reality is huge amount of bandwidth is possible. Characteristics not drifting with the temperature, they are not achievable. What we can have in reality is lesser amount of drift, not complete elimination of drift. Some more points. The op amp is said to be perfectly balanced if V0 is 0, output is 0 when V1 equal to V2. So perfect balance of op amp is defined here. The real operational amplifiers always exhibits an unbalance caused by mismatch of the input transistors. This mismatch results in unequal BIOS currents flowing through the input terminals and also requires that an input offset voltage to be applied between two input terminals to balance the output terminals. Ideal op amp is one apart from other things which exhibits perfect balance but in reality it is not so. So we have to do something so that it is balanced. This balance in practice is achieved by connecting some voltage between input terminals. Slowing rate is defined as maximum rate of change of output voltage when supplying the rated output. The maximum possible rate of change of output voltage is known as slew rate. Slew rate is an important uh, parameter pertaining to the characteristics of uh, up amps. Slew rate is dv0 by dt maximum. Two slew rates can be defined. One when output voltage in its uh, is in its positive excursion, and the other when it it is under negative excursion. The corresponding rates are being denoted by SR plus and SR minus respectively. Now, after having some understanding, some familiarity with the characteristics of op amps, now we move to modes of uh, op amps. There are two modes, inverting uh, mode and non-inverting mode. The few points regarding inverting mode is considered here right now. In A is shown inverting op amp with added voltage shunt feedback. This is op amp. Input is connected. Input source is connected between input terminals, inverting terminal, non-inverting terminal. Along with it, you can see a feedback loop is also there. Feedback path is also there. This is a basic uh, inverting op amp structure. By placing uh, different components uh, in the location of Z, in the location of Z prime, one can make uh, this amplifier to work as adder, subtractor, integrator, differentiator, etc which we are going to see soon. In B is shown virtual ground in the op amp. What is virtual ground? Op amp is supposed to exhibit infinite input uh, resistance. It is supposed to have an open circuit here. So whatever current that is flowing through Z, it has to flow through Z prime. No current through the op amp, of course, this is ideal situation. No current should enter into the amplifier between 
inverting terminal and non inverting terminal one can see a virtual ground prevailing here non inverting terminal is connected to ground no current here so when ground is there this ground is virtual ground some more points regarding inverting op amp it consists of an ideal op amp with feedback impedances z z prime and the plus terminal grounded the voltage gain with feedback is then given by this formula avf stands for voltage gain with feedback it is minus z prime by z this relation is valid only when voltage gain is infinite notice this is the case of ideal op amp in case of practical inverting amplifier which does not have ideal characteristics the closed loop voltage gain is given by minus y by y prime minus 1 by ab y prime plus y plus y i where voltage gain ab is v not by v y v i taking load z prime into account it is uh, ab plus r not y prime by 1 plus r not y prime the symbol av is the open circuit uh, unloaded voltage gain this relation we are going to use frequently of course uh, the relation given for a practical inverting amplifier it becomes the relation avf equal to minus z prime by z when we design the amplifier making it almost uh, or near to an ideal one with this we come to an end to the session in this session the focus is on origins and development of uh, op amps the characteristics modes of operation equivalent circuit etc remaining aspects of uh, op amps they are discussed in uh, part 2 uh, mainly the focus in part 2 is on how op amp is able to perform operations mathematical operations hope this session is useful to you we meet again in session 2 or part 2 of the session on op amps soon